Good evening. Good to see all of you. Welcome to worship. This will be our last Wednesday night service, right? Uh, Palm Sunday is this Sunday, leading us into all of the Holy Week services. So uh, glad to have you here uh, tonight. Is or, or the theme for tonight is the, done with the rest of them uh, is uh, palms, palms and victory. So give us a little bit of uh, preview for what's to come on Sunday. I do get to share some really wonderful news with you tonight. Uh, we have a new uh, member to our Emmanuel family, uh, Austin and Vicki Peach, but one of our teachers next door, uh, welcomed into the world today. Andrew Paul Peach uh, was born this morning, so exciting news for Vicki, one of our Vicki and Austin, of course, Vicki being one of our teachers. So we're glad for them and excited, and pray God's blessings on the whole family as they welcome that baby. So at this time, let's rise, greet those around us, and start with our opening hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Lord Jesus, search our hearts and minds that we may receive your word, share in your spirit, and be renewed in our relationship with you and with one another. We observe at a moment of silence for personal prayers of confession. With humble hearts, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, the Father's only Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray. You call us to celebrate your victory over death and the grave, but often we resign ourselves to defeat and refuse to give you our praise. Our rebellion against you in thought, word, and action is why you died for us. To forgive our sins, to redeem our lives, and to cancel the debt we owe to God. With hearts that are humble and lives that are 
grateful. Help us to receive your grace, bow before you in worship, and confess that you alone are Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, shows his mercy to us in the sending of his, uh, of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the eternal King of Israel, King David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comes to bless us with life and salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray responsibly. Lord Jesus Christ, palms lifted up, lifted high, were waved in the air to celebrate your triumph. As those who know you as King and Savior, help us to be altogether joyful because of your victory over our foes. Renew our hearts and minds during this Lenten season, as we receive the promised treasures of your word. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading tonight is from Deuteronomy chapter 16. You shall keep the feast of booths seven days when you have gathered in the produce from your threshing floor and your wine press. You shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow who are within your towns. For seven days you shall keep the feast of the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you will be altogether joyful. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the feast of unleavened bread, at the feast of weeks, and at the feast of booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes, peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, honor, and power, and might be to our God, forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able this evening for our gospel reading from John chapter 7. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from? But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him, and they said, When the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him. And the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. 
On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up, cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we confess our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this coming Sunday, as I mentioned, is Palm Sunday. And, and as you think about that story, I hope you remember uh, that right as Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. And we have one of the sharpest uh, changes in, in approach or attitude, I guess maybe it's right to say that's change of direction, really even might say in all of history, right? Jesus enters into Jerusalem and the people are shouting what? Shouting Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, they are happy to see Jesus. Right? The king has come. But in a few short days, those words of praise will turn into words of condemnation and murder as they shout, Crucify him. Right? 
And, and so it's quite the contrast from that first day, which, you know, as we can talk about Palm Sunday, when they, they wave those branches and that celebration that happens there. And I want to take a second, as we've done in this series, to, to think of the promises that might be associated with some of the everyday things. And this time we think of the, the palms that were held up. <coughs> in the Old Testament, uh, as you heard of tonight's reading, palms had a, a great distinction even back then, right? So it, it, we read about the Feast of Tabernacles, or, and it really it literally means tent, okay? So the Feast of Tents. What was required was all Jewish men were required to go back to Jerusalem, and, and part of the purpose of that feast was to remember how God had provided for the Israelites during their 40-year journey in the wilderness, remember? So we recently just read, I, I believe it was last week's midweek, where we read they were in the wilderness, and, and God provided what for them that fell from the sky? provides manna. We also heard that he provided quail, so there was the meat that he provided. And uh, other instances, what else did he happen to provide? That So they had meat, bread, and water from the rock, right? And, and they come then to remember God's provision in the midst of all of that desert and wilderness in those 40 years, how God continued to provide. And they would come with leafy branches, they would come with their palms, celebrating. Um, and honestly, they, and it was kind of like just a weekend at the uh, maybe camping because they just had these tents, and you know, that's how they would spend that time, the men, as they celebrated and remembered. In this whole process, God was leading the people to remember how God provided for them, giving them those three things. Uh, the feast happened in the fall, late September, early October, and as the feast would continue, as the festival, the priest, the high priest, would take two goats. And on one, he would, it was called the scapegoat, where we get the term from. He would, as the group would confess, essentially, all the sins of the people would be placed, so to speak, on that goat. And that goat would then be released to go die in the wilderness, carrying the sins of the people. The other goat would then be brought to be sacrificed um, in that whole same process, and that blood would be brought from the altar area then into the Holy of Holies with the high priest as he would bring it and place it on the mercy seat, on the place where God was. We talked about the, um, the ark. And again, part of this whole process from them remembering and to be receiving God's grace as they would do these sacrifices. And they would remember how God provided, how their sandals didn't wear out, Leviticus says, how there was water, food, and the manna. Um, and, and then to remember too, their own brokenness and sinfulness in the whole process, how the people were rebellious throughout this, and yet God was faithful. They would remember, to some of the consequence of that, as that whole first generation, right, they had, been, they had escaped from Egypt, wandered in the wilderness, and that first generation, because of their disobedience and sin, did not get to go into the promised land, even, even Moses himself. And so when they would camp there every year, they, they would remember those past failures and sin, but above all, they would remember God's wonderful and generous provision for them. And, and it, it was a celebratory time in the midst of remembering their sin, right? They would do all of that, but then they would celebrate as they, as they uh, waved the palm branches, remembered God's grace and mercy. We do the same. We have palms to joyously celebrate the life that we have in Jesus every single day, right? We're on the verge of Holy Week and remembering Jesus' story. He would institute the Lord's Supper. He would battle Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? He's stressful so to the point of bleeding drops uh, or sweating drops of blood. He was going to be betrayed by Judas, abandoned by his friends. We see Jesus suffering on Good Friday which I don't know if you've been to a Good Friday service, but I can't invite you enough. It's one of our lower services, but it's an amazing service as we see and retell the story. It's a very somber, moving service. And as we think of all that stuff that happens that week that we remember, the question is, why does Jesus do it? It's out of his love and desire to save you, to give you an eternal victory. We, we wave the palm branches in the same way you heard in that reading from Revelation of the saints in heaven, the ones robed with the righteousness of Jesus, those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, who are victorious. And we join with them waving those branches because we are victorious, because Jesus has saved you too. Those people in heaven shouting, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. 
And that is good news. In the world today, there is so much struggle. There is so much sin and brokenness. And the promises we have in Jesus, the waving of the palm branches point to another future. We see the brokenness every single day. It's been uh, in our face, especially this week, with the senseless violence and the shooting uh, and so many tragic things day after day. So, I mean, funerals alone are a reminder. Loved ones who are sick. But you have the victory in Jesus. In the midst of all of that bad news, you are victorious in Christ because you've been baptized and covered in the holiness of Jesus. We are sinful and we deserve that death, but Jesus has fixed all of it because Jesus is the one who took the punishment. He was the one who went to the Roman soldiers and was beaten and scourged. He is the one who was mocked as they dressed him in purple robes. He was the one crowned with the crown of thorns. And he was the one shamefully hung, hanging on the cross, dying for us and receiving all of God's wrath. Why? So that you would be victorious. That's why we wave the palm branches. Very soon, right, we're going to have all sorts of a Good Friday. This is going to be draped in, in all black as we mourn. But on Easter Sunday, we're going to have lilies. You're going to have the cross here that has all those bright flowers. All of those signs of rest, beauty, peace, and tranquility. Signs of life and victory for what Jesus has done. Clothing you in his own goodness. Giving you the grace and mercy that only he can give. So rest today. Recline joyfully, right? We said that in the reading. He wants us to be filled with joy because of the hope we have in him. You have been baptized. You've been given that mercy and forgiveness of Jesus. You have been made holy. The victory from Jesus is yours. Your eternal victory is won by him. Amen. And may the peace of God then, which surpasses all understanding, may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Let's rise as we go to God in prayer. Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to meditate again on the cross of Christ and receive your promised treasures. May the message of the Lamb of God, slain for our salvation, bring us the riches of your pardon and peace. Lead us to see that our sins caused Jesus great agony in the garden, that our sins nailed him to the cross of Calvary. That he was forsaken by his Father. Lord Jesus, grant that especially during this sacred season, the treasured story of your wondrous love for us would draw us closer to you. Inspire us by the humble waiting pilgrims to sing your praises as we enter Jerusalem. Enter to our lives that we may have victory in you, amid the pain and mercy of this world. Holy Spirit, lift up troubled souls everywhere. Grant wholeness to those hurting in heart, body, and mind. Work your healing power in the lives of those in need. We, we pray especially tonight for those families and communities hurting because of the school shooting and any that are affected by senseless violence. Uh, we pray for the sick and the grieving and in the lives of all that we name before you in our hearts. All glory, honor, and praise be to you with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we also rejoice at the birth of Andrew Paul Peach, uh, born to Austin and Vicki. We pray your blessings upon uh, baby, mom, and dad, and ask you to bless the family. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We pray together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.